Pilates mat work is an excellent complement to your yoga practice. The strength, skill, and focus that come with the core strengthening practice of Pilates helps to give us more confidence and improved ability in our yoga skills. Day 27 of Commit 30 Days of Yoga is a Yoga Pilates fusion. Please remember to like and subscribe and stick around to the end where we break down a movement from today's book. Let's begin reclined onto our backs, knees bent up. Draw both knees into chest, get wide through the sit bones, hugging the legs. Draw nose to knees, tucking the chin down in a wind relieving pose. Release your head down, position your legs to a tabletop position, 90 degree bend through the hips and through the knees. Arms at your sides, palms facing down. On an exhale, we're gonna raise the arms, shoulders and head, reaching towards the legs. Let's repeat this a few more times, moving with our breath, Keeping that chin tucked down firmly to protect the neck when we raise the head in any type of reclined position. Keeping your legs in a tabletop position, let's go into alternating toe taps. Lower the right leg, toes tap down, then the left. Continue alternating sides, moving at your own pace. Be sure that the movement is coming from the hips with no extra bending in the knees, keeping your knees at a 90 degree angle. Let's do one more on each side. Hands on your knees, rock a little from side to side. Return your legs to a tabletop position. Let's pedal out the legs in a bicycle motion, reaching each leg out long, pointing through the toes, moving forward at your own pace. Good, let's reverse that movement now. Still reaching long through the legs, moving at your own pace. Good, hands on your knees, rock a little from side to side. Hug your right knee into chest, extend the left leg out long, keeping it above the mat, point through the toes, raise your shoulders nose to knee, tucking the chin down and switch your legs in a single leg extension, alternating sides, moving at your own pace. If you feel any pain in your neck here, you can lower the head for a moment and then bring it back up when you feel ready. Remember to keep your chin tucked down like you're squeezing a ball between your chin and your chest. One more on each side and lower down for a rest. Returning your legs to a tabletop position. Bring your heels together, knees apart. The head's gonna stay down this time, arms at our sides. We're gonna extend both legs together. Knees come together once we do that. And then as we draw the legs back in, knees come apart. Continue moving through double leg extensions at your own pace.
Last one. Hands on your knees, rock a little from side to side. Lower your feet down to the mat, hip width apart, knees pointing up, arms down at your sides. Tuck the tailbone under as we raise the hips to a bridge pose, drawing the shoulder blades closer together and clasping our hands beneath us. Keep your glutes and inner thighs engaged, knees hip width apart. Focus on keeping a steady breath. Still up in our bridge pose, squeeze just the right glute, releasing the left. Then squeeze just the left glute, releasing the right. Continue alternating sides like this. Release your hands and lower down. Extend the right leg straight up, pointing through the toes. We're gonna lower and lift the leg, moving at your own pace. Focus on moving nothing else throughout the body, just that leg, the movement coming from the hip. Last one. Let's grab onto that right foot with the right hand or at the toes and extend the leg, pulling it in towards you for a stretch. Release the foot down. Let's do that on the opposite side. Extend the left leg straight up, point through the toes and engage the leg. Lower and lift. Again, trying to move nothing else throughout the body but this left leg. Last one. Grab onto that left foot and extend the leg, drawing it in towards you. Release the left foot down. Let's go back to the right side, extending the leg, pointing through the toes. We're gonna draw circles, moving nothing but this right leg, as small or as big as you want, moving at your own pace, keeping the core engaged, moving only the right leg. And let's reverse the direction of those circles. Place your right leg over the left knee. Draw the left leg in to a reclined pigeon pose or a figure four stretch. Releasing the stretch, right foot down. Extend the left leg, let's draw circles one way. And 
and the other. Place the left leg over right, draw the right leg in to our reclined pigeon pose. release. Let's take both legs up to our tabletop position, keeping the knees and feet glued together. Arms out at your sides at shoulder height. Let's drop both legs over to the right side and then keeping them together, lift and bring them all the way over to the left. Continue twisting from side to side, moving at your own pace, trying as much as possible to keep the knees and feet together throughout the entire movement here. Last one, returning the legs to tabletop position. Lower your feet down to the mat. Extend your left leg out long. Twist your right leg over to the left side of your mat in a reclined twist. Right arm extended at shoulder height. Let's look over that right shoulder. Take your time coming out of the twist. Draw the left knee up, extend the right leg. Let's twist that left leg over to the right side and gaze over our left shoulder. Coming out of the twist, let's turn onto our side, resting our head in our hand, stacking the hips and the feet. You can make a little bit of a curve, like a banana shape with your body here, if it's a little bit more comfortable. Top hand rests down ahead of us for support. Raise the top leg up about a foot or a foot and a half. Keeping the foot flexed, let's lower and lift 10 times. Nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Staying up on the last one. Good, point the toes, let's draw small circles forward, moving at your own pace. Reverse, making circles back now. Next, we're gonna go into passes. Pointing the toes down, drag those toes up the leg as high as you can, and then kick up, extending the leg, keeping it long as we lower it back down and repeat. Move at your own pace, 
keeping a firm point through the toes. Last one. Draw that top leg in towards you, grabbing onto the ankle, plant the foot ahead of your bottom leg. Flex the foot of the bottom leg and raise it up. We're gonna lower and lift that leg 10 times. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Keep floating that leg. Let's point through the toes and draw small circles forward. And back. Good, release that lower leg down. Guide the top foot to the inner edge of the bottom leg just like we do in tree pose, positioning the foot either above or below the knee. Keep that hip open, knee pointing up. Engage the lower leg pointing through the toes. You can even hover them above the mat here. Take that top hand to a half prayer pose at your chest. You can continue to support your head in your hand or extend that lower arm in a fallen tree pose. and release. Pressing up, make your way over onto your opposite side. Resting your head in your hand, stacking the hips and the feet, top hand planted ahead of you for support. Raise that top leg, lower and lift 10 times. Nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Stay up on one, point through the toes, drawing circles forward. And back. Point the toes down, drag them up the leg as high as we can, extend and lower. Repeat, moving at your own pace. Last one. Grab onto that top ankle, planting that foot ahead of you. Float the bottom leg, keeping the foot flexed. Let's lower and lift 10 times. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and keeping the foot floating on one point through the toes, let's draw small circles forward. And back. And release. To fall in tree, placing the foot along the inner edge of the bottom leg. Point the toes on that bottom leg, top hand to a half prayer pose at your heart, and the option is yours for that lower arm. release. Pressing up, make your way to a kneeling position at the center of your mat. Tops of the feet are pressing down, toes pointing straight back. Extend the right leg out to the side. Let's side bend to the right, taking the left arm up and over in gate pose.
over to the left, plant the left palm down, reaching the right hand up. Here we're gonna raise that right leg to hip level, keeping the foot flexed, holding it here. Lower the right leg, pressing the body back up, hands to heart. Draw the right leg back in, sending the left leg out to the side. To gate pose, let's side bend to the left, reaching that right arm up and over. Over to the right side, right hand down, left arm up. Float the left leg to hip height, flexing the foot, staying really strong through the body as we hold here. Lower the leg, lift the body, hands to heart. Return that left leg into kneeling. Going into a frog stretch, place your hands down ahead of you. Take your knees apart, then feet apart. Lining the ankles up behind the knees, flexing the feet, hips in line with your knees. You can stay up on your hands or lower to your forearms. If you're on your forearms, press to your hands. Take your feet together, knees together, and make your way to a tabletop position, lining yourself up, and begin to move through cat-cow, flowing with your breath. flat back. Lower down onto your belly in Sphinx Pose. Forearms down, parallel to each other, palms flat. Keep the legs engaged as we get long through the chest and neck. Gaze forward, keeping the shoulders down and away from the ears. Lower the chest, reaching your arms out ahead of you. Let's lift right arm and left leg. Lower down, left arm and right leg. Lower down. Continue with these alternate raises, moving at your own pace. Squeezing through the glutes, keeping the toes pointed, reaching long through the arms and fingers. Last one, lower all the way down. Big inhale, on an exhale, we're lifting to Superman, raising the legs, chest, and arms, reaching long through each limb. And lower down, big inhale, exhale, lifting back up. Let's swim, fluttering the arms and legs. And lower down. 
Cross your arms ahead of you to prop yourself up in the upper body. Bend your knees, toes pointing up. Squeeze the glutes and float the knees. Keeping them floated, extend the legs pointing long through the toes. Bend the knees pointing the toes back up and then release the knees down to the mat. Again, squeeze the glutes, float the knees, extend the legs, bend the legs and lower down. Again, raise the knees, keep those toes pointed, extend, bend and lower. Keep it going, moving at your own pace. Or you can take them to rest at the sides of your body. Last one. Lower the legs and make your way to a child's pose. Hips over heels, release any tension through the lower back. Arms can be extended ahead of you here, or you can take them to rest at the sides of your body. Pressing to a downward facing dog, or in Pilates, we call it elephant. Draw that right knee forward to a pigeon stretch and hold. Pressing back to downward facing dog. Let's go to the left side, drawing the left knee forward to pigeon. And hold. Coming out of pigeon, take your feet together, knees out wide, sending your hips over your heels in a kneeling position, resting your hands on your knees and sitting up tall as we take a few deep breaths here to finish up. cow are two yoga poses that are most often done together as a warm-up to help prepare the body for our yoga practice. These poses help to stretch the whole torso and the neck. They help to stimulate our digestive organs. They bring movement to the spine, allowing the spine to come into correct alignment and when done frequently, help to relieve back pain. So let's take a look at how we're supposed to do cat cow. Some things that we can do differently and how to modify. So the first thing we do when going into cat cow is to line ourselves up properly. We want to relieve pressure from the knees and the wrists, and we want to gain the most that we can from these two poses. So going into a tabletop position, I'm going to place my knees hip width apart, and I'm going to make sure that my knees are stacked beneath my hips, and that my wrists are stacked beneath my shoulders. So we don't want to be further out here, we don't want to be coming this way or this way at least not to start. So let's line ourselves up. And then we're gonna do that thing with our hands where we get really, really wide through the base and we dig our fingertips down, creating that hollow center in the palm that relieves pressure from the wrist. So we're pressing down through the fingertips and through the base of the palm here, the heel of the palm. 
Now our toes are pointing straight back, not in towards each other. Straight back, and the tops of the feet are pressing down firmly into the mat, which helps relieve pressure from the knees. And if this is something that's really uncomfortable for you, you can curl the toes under. But again, applying pressure into the toes helps to relieve pressure from the knees. So from here, starting with a cat pose, we're gonna round out the back on an exhale. So we're exhaling and we're gonna draw the navel up towards the spine and get really, really wide through the shoulder blades. Here, we're not gonna try to tuck the head down. We're just gonna allow the head to bow down and get heavy, stretching through the back of the neck. So we're not pulling it one way or the other. We're just allowing it to kind of rest here. Good, so as wide as I can through the shoulder blades. And then leading with the tailbone. So this is important, we want our neck and our head to be the last things to move here as we transition into cow pose. I'm gonna start all the way down here at my tailbone and I'm gonna start to curve that up and I'm gonna follow all the way up the spine. Finally, head and neck and this is done on your inhale. So I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna lead with my tailbone when I come back to cat pose. So on an exhale, I'm gonna to start to round out, tucking the tailbone under, draw the navel up towards the spine, get wide, wide, wide through the shoulder blades and bow the head down. Inhale to cow pose. Exhale to cat pose. Okay. So it's that simple. So here are some things that we can do. If we have a hard time with our wrists, we can do this from our forearms. If we find it really painful in the hand or in the wrist. So from your forearms, you can round out and you can dip. But you might find that a little inconvenient or a little uncomfortable. It just might not feel as good. So what you can do is use a cushion to help bring you up higher or something a little bit more firm. Whatever you can to bring the earth closer to you as you round out the back. So remember, this is a stretch for the torso, shoulders, the neck. So the focus is there and we just want to create movement there and find movement there any way that we can. Something else that we should do is remember to keep our shoulders down and away from our ears. So when we're flowing here, we don't want to allow our ears to come down towards our shoulders. We want to stay along in both poses, okay? Danny, I need that blanket. I need oh, I know, big sigh. Here you go, you can sit on the cushion. You can the cushion anymore. So if you have knee pain, you can position a blanket beneath your knees. Excuse me. Excuse me, little Miss Lady. So you can position the blanket underneath your knees and flow this way here. So always doing whatever we can to make sure that we're the most comfortable. Now I like to play around in cat-cow. So knowing that this is a warm up for your practice, or it could be an instance where it's in the middle of our practice or near the end, cat-cow really helps us to reconnect with our breath and slow it down, finding focus. So something that I like to do sometimes when I'm in cat-cow is if I'm having a hard time slowing down my breath, or if I'm finding that I'm really sore from something I did earlier that week and I just wanna, something feel, feels really, really good and I wanna stretch my abdominals a little bit more or warm up my spine a little bit more, maybe I'm gonna stay in one of these poses or the other for longer than just the half breath. The half breath being just an inhale or just an exhale. So I might exhale, round out, and then while I'm here, take another full breath, inhale, Exhale, and then inhale. So that's completely up to you. You can hold one of these poses or each one a little bit longer if it feels really, really good. Again, if you did a core workout, um, cow pose really helps to stretch the abdominals. It feels really good. So it's something that we can hold a little bit longer. If our obliques are a little bit sore or if we really like those side bends or that's what we're kind of feeling that day, when you're in cat cow, you can kind of Round out a little bit on the up stretch and then coming down, wag the tail. If that's what feels really good, maybe finding some circular movement here. 
So coming up and down is really important to start. Once, once we're connected to our breath and once we've found that alignment, we can start to move around a little bit and kind of feel what our body is telling us to do and kind of just go with it. Another thing that we can do in cat cow is stretch the wrists. So we've done wrist stretches where we're in table pose and we kind of rock the body back and forth. Well, as long as you're maintaining that length through the spine, length through the neck, you can rock a little bit here. Good, and you're finding lots of movement in the wrists here, helping warm up that part of the body as well. More ways that we can get the same kind of movement without being in a quadrupted or tabletop position are from a seated position, so we can sit on the ground in an easy pose with our hands on our knees, begin to move front to back, staying long through the neck, keeping those shoulders down so we're not drawing that up here, we're drawing down and back, and then get wide, wide through the shoulder blades, draw the navel back towards the spine. So finding that same movement and really warming up the body here. If you work a desk job and you find yourself sitting a lot, the movement of cat-cow can really counteract what sitting is doing to your digestion by getting things kind of moving and flowing in there. And it can really help realign your spine, especially after that compression that you get from sitting for so long. Sometimes we don't notice that our posture is just beginning to crumble. So grabbing a chair, If you're sitting at your desk at work, it's the same thing. So you can hold on either to your desk or you can hold on to your knees and just kind of find a little bit of movement. It doesn't even have to be big movement. If you're in an office full of people, somebody might not even notice that you're doing this. You can just find the smallest bit of movement here, but it's the exact same idea. You can even make circles. Get a little bit going, a little bit of release, a little bit of relief, some focus, some reconnecting to your breath, which will in turn help with your concentration and wake you up for the rest of the day. So if you're at home and you feel like you need to move, but you don't want to put on a video or maybe you just woke up or maybe you're about to go to bed or maybe you want to try to improvise a little flow listening to your body, starting with Cat Cow is a really great way to warm you up for that one to three minutes of slow movement, maybe starting with proper alignment and then kind of wiggling around and seeing where your body wants to take you is a really great